Okay guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a small hovercraft that will work really well for like a science project or something, and I kind of outlined that in the first actual video clip, but uh, I just kind of wanted to throw a disclaimer in here at the beginning. This video is really long because it's very detailed, and it's basically for anybody who has never done anything like this before. And so if you are just interested in seeing the working hovercraft, I've got another video on here of it. I'm testing it on just a couple different surfaces like a kitchen floor, garage floor, uh, driveway, pavement, asphalt, and then on water. And uh, I haven't actually shot the video yet, so it'll be up really soon after this one. But um, if you're just interested in seeing a hovercraft work, then I would go and check out that video instead of watching through this whole one. But uh, if you have no idea how to make one and you would like to make one, then this video is probably for you. Alright, what is up guys? Today I have yet another hovercraft video to show you. Uh, today we're just building a small one. It's going to be using a CPU fan and a couple 9 volt batteries as the uh, drive for it. And uh, what we're basically going to do is cut out the shape, duct tape it all together, and uh, then, then we'll start worrying about attaching the fan and how to attach it and where to go from there. But uh, if, it, if I get it done and I get it working well, then hopefully I'll be able to take another video of it running on water. And this will be a great science project or something for kids in grade school. Or if you're like me, you could be all the way in college and just want to do it for fun. But uh, let's get started. Okay, step one is going to be to draw out your design on cardboard or whatever material you're using for the deck of your hovercraft. Now I'm using more of like a classic design that you would see on most just regular full-sized hovercrafts that people would actually be able to drive and ride on. And so what I'm kind of doing here is just dotting out a rectangular shape and then sort of a trapezoidal shape up at the top. And I'm just going to draw straight lines, as straight as I can, freehand anyway. Connecting these. Boy, that got bad real quick, didn't it? And then I'm going to draw these other lines here, making the trapezoidal structure on top, and then another crooked line at the top, and then another straight line at the bottom. And then I'm just going to draw little rounded edges. Now, I don't really care how this looks when it's done, so I'm just drawing it freehand. I'm not really measuring anything out. I'm just hoping that it's not going to be so small that the fan's actually going to weigh it down. Um, then the next step will be to go on and cut out your shape. It's going to be a lot easier if I do this. I'm using these shears not because they're so much easier to use, but because I think all the scissors I have are either really dull or maybe this cardboard is just extra tough or something, I don't know, but it was pretty much impossible to cut it with just regular scissors. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part because this is just going to waste a lot of time in the video, so you guys, through the magic of editing, will just see this as one quick little motion. Okay, so I've cut out the design now, and um, as you can see, I made it a little larger than I drew it out, but um, I kind of thought, well, you know, even with the smaller of the two fans on here, it's still going to be taking up a lot of space, and I might not have enough room for the skirt. So, what I've what I plan to do, because this fan will operate on just one 9-volt battery, even though it is a 12-volt fan, and uh, I plan to wire the two batteries together and hopefully make 18 volts, and that'll make it run at a higher RPM, and it'll also increase the amperage, so hopefully the fan will run quite a bit stronger, and it'll be able to get this thing up and lift it. And the step after this is actually going to be to add the skirt. But uh, what I'm going to end up doing is taking a box cutter probably to cut out where this fan's going to be. But right now, 
I'm just going to trace around it with my marker. And sorry for talking directly into the microphone there, but uh, I had to adjust this to make sure it was still in the shot. I got that side, so that will be fine there, I think. And I'm gonna go get an, a box cutter and cut that out now. Okay, so I'm back with my box cutter. And uh, for all you kids watching this, unless your parents don't care, you should probably have them help you with this part because this is really sharp. Okay, I'm working from behind the camera now, but as you can see, I've got those two 9 volt batteries wired together, negative terminal to positive terminal, and that will add up the voltage there. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see the fan, and I'll do it this way, and then I'll do it with just one of the 9 volts, and you guys will be able to tell the difference, I'm sure. Oh, I don't have good connection yet. I haven't soldered or taped any of this up, but oh, if I can get it to work. So that's with both nine volts, and then here's just one. Both these batteries are fully charged, so. That should have no difference. You can see the fan's still down there going, just off that one 9 volt. And uh, so now I'm going to tape up the batteries, and because I don't have any soldering, so I'm just going to have to tape everything together and hope it stays together. And uh, then I will install the fan and seal it up, and then it should be ready to install the skirt. Alrighty, I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have the batteries all taped up, and as scary as that looks, it actually works. I'll show you right here. So it works really well. The next step is going to be, since I cut my hole a little too big here, it's going to be to get a better seal for that fan. So what I'm going to do is pull the tape off, the duct tape off in thin strips like this, and then just kind of estimate how long they need to be to go on each side. Hopefully they won't stick to themselves like that one did. And then you just kind of put half of it on the top, fold it over and put half of it on the bottom. Okay, now that that's done, you can see that ought to hover. When it's done and the skirt's inflated, it should be about that high off the ground. Now I'm going to cut my wires accordingly and fit it all together. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now you can see I've kind of got some of the wires taped down, I've got some of the wires taped together, and I left that one there loose. Now, the reason for that is simple. It is because if I just plugged it in and left it plugged in, the fan would just run all the time. Now, you can get a switch and install the switch, and it's very easy. It's either taping or soldering together two more wires and it's no big deal but this way there's enough tension there to pretty much hold it in place hands free and just let the fan run and then when I'm done with it I just let it go so that works for me for now because I just didn't have a switch on hand but um, our next step is going to be to add the skirt and you can see I've taped I've loosely taped down the battery pack so it won't flop around on me and disconnect all the wires while I attach the skirt, but once I get the skirt attached, I'm probably going to move the battery pack around a little bit just so I can adjust the center of mass of the craft because you don't want it leaning too far forwards or too far backwards because then if you put it in water or something like that, it would just sink and you really don't want the cardboard to get wet, especially if you want this thing to last 
for more than just one use. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the skirt and I will show you guys how to do Okay, so now this white stuff encircling the hovercraft is going to be the skirt. And uh, I'm just making it out of a trash bag, but uh, you could make it out of a more durable trash bag if you want the skirt to be more durable and make the craft last longer. But I'm making it out of this, I guess it's glad, I'm not sure, trash bag, just because it's light and easy. And so for me, with this craft and its weight, I think I'm going to try and make the skirt about two inches out from the craft on all sides. And uniformity is going to be key. However, as long as you're close, it should be okay. Because when you find when you do the final tape down and all that, you're you just you just really need to be close, that's all. And uh, I'm cutting all the way through both layers of the trash bag here, and so I'm probably gonna have to peel one layer away because you don't want both, otherwise air will not be able to make it out. And you can see, I mean, I'm not even following the lines exactly. You just, you just need to be close with the skirt, because when you go to tape everything down, that's when it's going to matter of getting it right. And to be honest, the more extra skirt you have, the better off you'll be, because it's always easier to take a little more off than it is to add plastic back to it. You would need to get a whole new bag if you needed to add more to it. Oh, I see why that's so difficult and not on the box. I think pretty well cut, so I should just be able to pull and separate it. Okay, there we go. There is the ugliest skirt I think I've ever made for a hovercraft. Trim some of these rough edges off. Maybe. There we go. Trim that edge off. Okay. Maybe the shears are dull. Maybe my shears and my scissors are all just dull. And the exacto knife and everything. Maybe I'm a little dull. I don't know. I'll find out. We'll see. So now you can see I've got this skirt here. The craft sits in the middle of it. And basically what you want to do is fold it over and get it as close as you can to the edge as possible. And I usually just staple it, but today I'm going to tape it because it's going to make a better seal and it's probably going to help it last longer. So here we go. And once you see how this is done, I'm going to fast forward through this part too. And I'm... I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me say that I'm just going to fast forward through it, but uh, it's not entirely for you guys, it's mostly for me, so when I go back and I'm doing my poor editing, I will know where I need to cut the video off and start fast forwarding it. Okay, so it's all taped down and it's very leaky, but that is okay. You can see the skirt does inflate and, you know, you can push the hovercraft and it's not going to do anything right now because there's no cushion of air for it to ride on, right? So, step number infinity is you can see where I've drawn these little holes here, or drawn marks for holes. You cut out these little holes. And that allows air to escape from the skirt into the underneath of the craft. And it's okay if these are not perfect. They just need, there just needs to be holes down here for, it to, for the air to escape. And they should be in some sort of pattern because that will help the best. And for right now, I'm just going to go with three holes because this fourth one up here is directly underneath the fan and I'm worried that that's going to let too much air escape and it won't even inflate the skirt. So, These holes cut. Darn glad force flex is proving to be very flexible.
Okay, so now you'll see when I start up the crown. Turn it upside down so now the battery's pulling away from the. There we go. So now there's air coming out of there. And that's what we want. And we're going to have to find some way to hold that there, right? So that it can make a nice cushion. Well, that's what this is for. That goes right smack dab in the middle. The air escapes into there. The air is then forced out underneath. Here, and I can still feel a lot of air escaping just straight through the fan, which is kind of not what we want. But uh, there'll be lots of fine tuning. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on putting this center plate in. I'll probably put it directly over that hole and then end up cutting another hole. So I will be right. Okay, so now hopefully you can see. I've got the center plate stapled on there. I'm not going to cut that hole out. I'm going to need to modify these holes a little bit. But when the craft is running, if the craft is running, you can see how that tension there makes these holes force air into this chamber here. Uh, I guess I need to get it in front of the camera in order to do that. The tension here forces air into this chamber here which will in turn force it out underneath the skirt and make the hovercraft hover. Alrighty. And it might actually work a little bit the way it is. I'm not sure. No, definitely not. Alright, I'm going to turn off the hovercraft and make some minor adjustments here. Okay, sorry if this video quality is not quite as good as the other, and sorry if this video is a little bit shaky. However, you can see, I got the hovercraft working. There are the strips that I had to cut in it to get it to actually hover. And yours, your build may vary a little bit, but you can see that the fan is working. And the hovercraft will post around as long as that fan stays running. But I'll get some stuff out of the way here. I want to keep running, fan. It's a little bit, a little bit sketchy, but it's okay. So here we go. Ready? One, two, and three. And that's just across the garage floor. We'll have to see how it really does on pavement. Alright guys, well thanks a lot for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, sorry that it was so long and that the camera work wasn't that great, but I really wanted to get it out quickly so I didn't have a whole lot of time to edit, and really I think in order to get the full tutorial of how to build one of these things, it needed to be as long as it was, so like I said, I hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to comment and subscribe and leave any suggestions so that I can improve my work, or if you have suggestions for something else you'd like to see, don't hesitate, have a good one.